Jeff C. here on Thursday, June the 20th, coming to you with the latest on the TPP. Do you know what the TPP is? Have you heard about the TPP? Well, you're going to want to know because it's going to affect you if you happen to live in several of these super powerful countries that are getting together and finding out ways, well... Let's just say the multinational corporations that uh, tend to run these countries are working hard, working hard to come up with their own rules and laws so that your own country rules and laws can't protect you. Yes, this is what globalists do. We've seen it time and time again. Um, While we're consumed with all these fake flags false flags these bombings uh stories that are going on i mean little stories that get blown up into big things the real big picture are these trade agreements that um are going to break down barriers and eventually just eliminate the whole idea of nationhood you know that exists as we know it today so i've always i've wanted to get into this for quite some time and kind of had it on the back burner uh no longer now we need to really look at this uh so coming here from global research center this was an article that was uh, published uh on june the 5th giving a little bit of of introduction to what this whole tpp thing is here we go did you know that barack obama has secretly uh, negotiating the most important trade agreements since the formation of the world trade organization did you know that this agreement will impose very strict internet copyright rules ban all buy american laws give wall street banks more freedom to trade risky derivatives and force even the more uh, domestic manufacturing offshore yes If you have not heard about this treaty, don't feel bad. Obama has refused to even give Congress a copy of the draft agreement, and he has banned members of Congress from attending negotiations. (laughs) Even Congress is left in the dark, but they're pretty useless anyways these days. Uh, The plan is to keep uh, this treaty secret until the very last minute and then to railroad it through Congress and have it signed into law by October. This is how they do it. How many times have we we shown this? Um, um, they, they, they'll secretly prepare these things and then they'll stick them on the back of some huge long bill that'll be hundreds of pages long. And nobody will read through it and they'll pass it through. And next thing you know, hey, guess what? Guess what? You're now could be sued by corporations from other parts of the world for maybe downloading a song is something as stupid as that um the treaty is known as the trans-pacific partnership and nations that are reported to be involved in the development of this treaty include united states canada japan south korea australia new zealand chile peru brunei um singapore vietnam and malaysia Uh, opponents of this treaty will refer to it as nafta of the pacific and if it is enacted it will push the deindustrialization of america into overdrive i thought it was already in overdrive right (laughs) really one world such a common theme on free radio revolution the one world Econ- uh, economic agenda that Barack Obama has been pushing is absolutely killing the U.S. economy. As you will see later in this article, we are losing jobs and businesses at an astounding pace, and each new free trade agreement makes things even worse. Well, it doesn't make things worse uh, for the billionaire uh, multinational corporations and, and their owners and the Bilderbergers and, and groups like that that are... This is their whole thing, right? Let's break up the countries. Let's uh, let's take control of everything. Let's divide and conquer. 
Uh, let's bring in all these secretive trade agreements that people in their own little countries will have no freaking clue that all of a sudden they are no longer going to be protected. This is uh, dated from today. It's on the same site, Global Research, right? The Trans-Pacific Partnership Global Corporate Coup, Assault on Democracy and National Sovereignty, right? According to Ron Kirk, a former U.S. trade representative, making, um, making the text public would raise such opposition that it would make the deal impossible to sign. Exactly. I mean, how, how many times have we heard it from the likes of, of um, David Rockefeller, Henry Kissinger, you know, uh, is a big new Brzezinski. We got to keep these things quiet. We got to keep everybody else distracted while we are destroying their national sovereignty, right? We have here, uh, we talked about it in length. We had a very, one of our longest podcasts here was on the Canadian Council of Chief Executives, which 99.999% uh, of Canadians have never heard of. And uh, that is the reality of today. 99.999% of people have no idea who is, well, maybe not that much, but uh, most people have no idea who is really running the show. The Canadian Council of Chief Executives was all about basically destroying can Canadian sovereignty, right? It, it, it's, a, it's an utter joke. You have corporations that have completely rewritten all the business laws in Canada. Uh, nary a protest raised, right? Because most people just wouldn't get that information from the Grope and Fail or the National Post, right? Um, because they don't, they own those things, <laughs> quite simply right they own the news so uh they don't want people to hear about what they're doing so they fill the news with all kinds of 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 um crap right candy coated crap and uh, get people to uh talk about kardashians and stupid stuff like that so let's look a little bit more into this article here the trans-pacific partnership is a global corporate coup that makes corporations more powerful than governments absolutely that's already the case and undermines our national sovereignty while the public and media are not allowed to see the text and members of Congress only receive limited, heavily restricted access, 600 corporations have been advising the president and suggesting amendments as they have full access to the documents. These include America's worst corporate citizens. Oh, Monsanto, the most evil corporation on the planet. Walmart, Bank of America, JP Morgan, Pfizer, oh, big pharma. Wonderful. Cargill, Exxon, Mobile, Chevron. Wow. Jeez. Yeah. <laughs> you got it, folks. It's the who's who of psychopathic, out of control international corporations. Um, the Green Shadow Cabinet is putting forward a critical in depth analysis of the Trans Pacific Partnership. See links below. Um, Top people in their fields, movement leaders, academics, researchers, and activists are writing about the specific aspects of the TPP and how it affects virtually every aspect of American life. The Green Shadow Cabinet is about halfway through its analysis with more statements uh, coming over the rest of the week and into the new weeks. Uh, this type of in-depth analysis we need uh, from people informed on the top so that the public can become uh, informed and joins in the campaign to stop the TPP. Yes, absolutely. I haven't really heard of this green shadow cabinet, but um, I'm starting to like the sound of it right away um, that they are some sort of watchdog that is really digging into this. Um, some of the members of Congress are making their way through the bureaucratic process that allows them to see texts, but not allow their staff to do so. Uh, nor does it allow elected officials to make copies, take notes with paper or computer, because they don't want you to know anything. I mean, they're, they're terrified if people find out what's going on, right? That that could threaten, jeopardize their, their uh, plans to push these things through. Um, I suppose what people could do, especially in the United States and here in Canada, is contact your representative, your MPs, or your, in the United States, your congressman, uh, fucking badger the heck out of them, get them to know that this thing is fucking evil. Uh, it took Republican Alan Grayson, 
of uh, Florida, six weeks to of negotiation with the U.S. Trade Representative to finally review the text on June 17th. Uh, he was only allowed to see an edited version of the text and was not allowed to bring any staff with him. Look at this. This is just it. These are the same assholes that tell us, you know what? It's okay that we're going to spy on you and we're going to watch and record every fucking thing you do on your phone, uh, on the internet, with your tablet, with uh, your phone calls, everything. Because really, if you have nothing to hide, then, then, then why are you afraid, right? You've got nothing to hide, so why should you worry? And these assholes are hiding everything from everyone they don't even want their their these congressmen to see what they're up to <sighs> this is the way the globalists function grayson told the huffington post that obama administration classifies the documents uh to prevent discussion of the contents of course they don't want you to know what the fuck they're gonna do to you they maintain that the text is classified information and i get clearance because i'm a member of congress but now they tell me that they don't want me to talk to anybody about it because if i did i'd be releasing classified information <sighs> While we appreciate Grayson for uh, going as far as he has, members of Congress need to break the silence and share the contents with the American people and all the people of all the nations that are taking part in this fucking hijack of our national sovereignty. Uh, it's just madness. Uh, from uh, what has leaked, the TPP will give corporations control over every aspect of our lives and make them more powerful than governments. The non-transparent approach to something so far-reaching is an assault on U.S. democracy, which we know by now has is, is been almost completely destroyed. As Senator Elizabeth Warren said when questioning the new trade representative... Good for Elizabeth Warren. Um, I have heard the argument that transparency would undermine the trade representative's policy to complete the trade agreement because public opposition would be significant. Warren explained, in other words, if people knew what was going on, they would stop it. This argument is exactly backwards. If transparency would lead to widespread public opposition to a trade agreement, then that trade agreement should not be the policy of the United States. But let's be honest, right? People who listen to the show regularly know by now that it's corporations that run this fucking planet. And governments work for these corporations. These shadow governments run. Um, they get together in, in groups like the Bilderbergs and many other secret meetings. And this is where they come up with these ideas, these plans. And then they fucking try to shove them through, sneak them through back deals. Is there any other way that banksters operate, right? I mean, you go back to the um, the formation of the Federal Reserve. <laughs> what a sick joke of a name. Uh, um, the Federal Reserve, the private bank that prints American money and uh, basically runs the United States, um, that they met in secret in 1913 on Jekyll Island, a fitting name for for their meeting in fact they they actually wore fake mustaches and and you know used pseudonames and you know mr brown mr pink whatever because they knew what they were doing was so fucking evil that if people had any idea they would be there would be riots all over the streets and and people calling for their heads so they do it in secret every fucking time democracy <laughs> it's a fucking joke this is what is happening now i said the canadian council of chief executives before and how they had completely rewritten all business laws in fact they even went so far to make sure that class action lawsuits could not be launched against them they rewritten the business code to basically detooth anyone or any group from 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 having any sort of um, contention with their power. Um, they meet with the prime minister about thirty times a year, thirty 
times a year. Now, they said 600 corporations are involved in this. I guarantee fucking to you that the 150 members of the Canadian Council of Chief Executives are definitely in this nasty, nasty fucking deal. Um... Grayson pointed out the irony and hypocrisy of Obama's administration approach. What I saw was nothing that could possibly justify the secrecy that surrounds it. It's ironic in a way that the government thinks it's all right to have a record of every single call that America Americans make, um, but it's not all right for American citizens to know what sovereign powers the government is negotiating away. Exactly, it's, it's exactly what I said before. The the this is. You have to have a psychopathic sort of mindset to be able to to carry this shit out. You have to have no respect for humanity. You have to be, um, you have to believe in the complete antithesis of democracy, right? To do this kind of shit, you have to be just plain outright fucking evil to be able to do this stuff. This is how they do it. We've seen it so many times, you know. And I'm happy to see that there's a lot of media that is actually uh, reporting on this uh, right now. It's all coming out. A lot of these articles are from the last few days. Oh. Here's uh, Margaret Flowers uh, writing for Al Jazeera. And she's saying the Trans-Pacific Partnership undermines health system. Medical corporations seek tools to protect their profits despite harmful effects on public health. Exactly, right? Big Pharma. They're not interested in helping people. They're interested in their own profits and growing their own enterprises. Um, this is just one element of the TPP. Let's read a little bit about her article here. The Trans-Pacific uh, Partnership is the deal is a deal that is secretly being negotiated by the White House with the help of more than 600 corporate advisors and Pacific Rim nations, well, including Australia, and we've mentioned all these countries before. Um, while it is being called a trade agreement, the U.S. already has trade agreements covering 90% of the GDP uh, of countries involved in the talks. Instead, the TPP is a major power grab by large corporations. The text of the TPP includes 29 chapters, only five of which are about trade. The remaining chapters are focused on challenges that multinational corporations have not been able to pass in Congress, such as restrictions on internet privacy, increased patent protections, greater access to litigation, and further financial uh, deregulation. I, I have a feeling that like these things like SOPA and PIPA and shit like that, I mean, they, yeah, they want to pu push them through, there's no doubt about it, but... But really, they use them so that they get everybody focused on that. And then if they get defeated, then they, oh, I got this working on the back burner, right? This is the real thing. This is what it's really about, right? You think these corporations are content with being, you know, within Canada or within the United States and, and, and having to uh, go through the, the hoops and, and all that to be able to you know ship their manufacturing to third world countries where they can use um you know sweatshops <laughs> right because we don't make anything here in our countries anymore in the west right it's all being made in china it's all being made in vietnam and and and, and places like that it's all it's that this is the whole idea for them how can we make it so we can make even more money and get more control and keep an eye on every single human being at the same fucking time uh, so far as it's known the contents of the tpp uh, is from documents that have been leaked um, from ngos and industry meetings unlike other tra uh, trade deals the white house refuses to make the text available of course we've already discussed that the white house is completely overrun by goldman sachs and other massive corporations that uh, have set up their puppet president obama who is wonderfully psychopathic enough to be able to do all this to his own people and not even flinch um in fact negotiations refused to publish the text until four years after it is signed into law why are they being so secretive um, former U.S. Trade Representative Ron Kirk said he opposed making the text public because doing so 
uh, would raise such opposition that it could make the deal impossible to sign. That's what we said before, right before in the other article. I wanted to get to the part here where they're talking about medical. Um, oh, here it is, right? One thing to be clear is the impact of the TPP on healthcare. The intention of the TPP is to enhance and protect the profits of medical and pharmaceutical corporations without considering the harmful effects their policies will have on human health. We know that the TPP will extend pharmaceutical and medical devices, uh, device patents and provide other tools to keep prices of these necessities high. This will make um, medications and treatments unaffordable for millions of people, it already is, and raise the cost of national health programs, which are almost already completely out of, out of, out of reach for, for most struggling people. At, at its worst, the TPP will provide a pathway to infect the world's health system with deadly parasite uh, parasite of for-profit health corporations that plagued the U.S., right? It's exactly what's happened to the United States. You have let the corporations, the pharmaceutical, the, oh, do I dare I use the psychopathic word again? The, the, the completely evil, <laughs> right? Pharmaceutical corporations that have completely dismantled any sort of, um, you know, fair system that might have existed in the United States and replaced it with something that is so fantastically out of reach for the average person um, that it really is one of the worst healthcare systems in the world. And the, the whole Obamacare makes it even worse. Um, and all this to protect these pharmaceuticals, these massive monster corporations. Um, through the, the TPP, pharmaceutical and medical device corporations are seeking extensive uh, patent protections using the process known as evergreening. You ever heard that term before, evergreening? The TPP gives 20 years of patent protection for pharmaceuticals and medical devices. However, patents can be re renewed for another 20 years uh, each time there is a change in the indication or delivery. For instance, if a drug is indicated for headaches, but then the pharmaceutical company finds out that it is also helpful for stomach cramps or makes it a capsule instead of a tablet, a new patent may be issued. In reality, patents can be extended indefinitely under the TPP. So they just want to take control of all of that, right? Uh, Doctors Without Borders criticized this practice, stating that the patent protections in previous trade agreements raised the price of life-saving medications and made them unavailable to people in poorer countries. Patents prevent the production of low-cost generic forms of medications, yet it was the availability of generic medicines to treat HIV and other infectious diseases that allowed the advances to be made in decreasing their impact in developing countries. Uh, yeah, interesting to hear from Doctors Without Borders. Um, they know exactly what this, this means. It means that people will not be able to afford <laughs> getting the treatments. They'll become so out of reach um, because pharmaceutical companies, these mega monster corporations, are concerned with their bottom line more than anything else in the world. Um because of the negative impact on public health from patent protections in previous trade agreements, such as the Korea Free Trade Agreement, former President Bush rolled some of these practices back. Unfortunately, the TPP will move them forward again. Uh, here's another thing that the, it, it goes further than previous agreements by also requiring that surgical techniques, medical tests, and treatments be patented. Let's patent everything. Let's make it so that nobody can do anything without having to pay a lot of money to these mega corporations. Is it any wonder they don't want you to know a goddamn thing about it? Is it any freaking wonder? <sighs> these are the deals that are being signed all the time. Another good example is just recently Obama signing the UN gun uh, law there, right? Which uh, he didn't tell anybody, right, when he did it. Um, all these things that completely subvert, for instance, the Second Amendment in the United States. Doctors with Borders also express concern that patent protections encourage the innovation based uh, on profit instead of the needs of the people, particularly those in poor nations. Corporations do not see it as in their financial interest to address health conditions uh, more prevalent in poor nations, which do not have the financial resources to buy their products, 
But it is often in these situations that uh, treatments can have the greatest impact. They don't give a flying fuck about the impact of the quality of life. Let's be honest, right? They don't give a flying fuck. They want to make money off you. And they want to make as much money as possible. They are outright evil. And attacking public health systems. Because then all of a sudden, your same, like here in Canada, your Medicare system will fall with under, underneath this. And then what do you know? All of a sudden, you can't afford your med- your medications. All of a sudden, governments think, well, we can control, we could set prices. No, you can't. Because you're signed on to the TPP. An area of great concern is the language within the TPP concerning state-owned enterprises. These are institutions that are fully or partially owned by governments. SOEs are very common in countries such as Vietnam, Malaysia, and Singapore. Um, corporate lobbyists are concerned that the SOEs have an unfair advantage over private industry. Right? Why should these these state-run um, things that uh, they're there to provide services for people who probably wouldn't be able to afford them. Um, why should they have the, the ability to do that? Let's destroy that ability and let's make it nothing but profit and fuck the people who can't afford their medications or get their treatments or have their surgeries. Fuck them. Fuck them. Fuck them in the air. Fuck them in the other ear. Uh, pardon my French. So um, these advantages, okay, I said that... Um, Let's take a little, little look more. I mean, there, there's so much here to, to, to cover. Um, we talked about Alan uh, Grayson before. Here uh, in an article posted on the uh, on uh, article from the Huffington Post, um, Alan Grayson on the Trans-Pacific Partnership, Obama secrecy hides assault on democratic government. Progressive Democrats in Congress are ramping up pressure on the Obama administration to release the text of the Trans-Pacific Partnership, a secretive free trade agreement with 10 nations um, amid intensifying controversy over the administration's transparency record and its treatment of classified information because that administration is so um, completely out of control um, and is so intent on destroying national sovereignty, so intent on being able to watch every single human being, not just in their own country, but everywhere else as well. (sighs) It's just madness how out of control. But that's what happens. When corporations take over governments, this is what happens. If you think like a corporation, you think of nothing but control and power. The only public uh, information available, well, we kind of discussed that before. Um, Let's talk about here what Alan Grayson told the Huffington Post on Monday. Um, Members of Congress have provided with only a limited access. Um, He viewed the uh, edited version of the negotiation text last week, but that uh, secrecy policies at the Office of U.S. Trade Representative created scheduling difficulties that delayed his access for nearly six weeks. Yeah, it's just, just... you know scheduling difficulties we gotta we gotta we gotta figure it out give us a few more weeks you know gotta figure out how to how to prevent you from getting this information then finally they give it to them but nope you can't take any notes you can't bring it home with you you can't look on the computer with it can't share it with anybody can't have anybody with you um (laughs) better have a good fucking memory right maybe as a photographic memory you print the whole bloody thing out but somebody's got it the Obama, the Obama administration has barred any congressional staffers from reviewing the full negotiation text and prohibited members of Congress from discussing the specific terms of the text with trade experts and reporters. Staffers uh, on some committees are granted access to portions of the text under their committee's jurisdiction. So uh, here's a quote from uh, Grayson. This, more than anything, shows the abuse of the classified information system they maintain that the text is a classified information and i can't get clearance because i'm a member of congress but now they tell me that they don't want me to talk to anybody because if i did it'd be releasing classified information kind of said that before but uh, bears repeating 
Um, and here they, of course, make reference to Edward Snowden's recent disclosures of the NSA and how they're spying on you and they're watching everything you do and da 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 da. But this is what they do. Isn't it ironic? Isn't it ironic that the government thinks it's all right to have a record of every single phone call that Americans make? But it's not all right for American citizens to know what uh, sovereign powers the government is negotiating away. Of course. Of course. You know, the irony is it's 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 stinging. It's just it's just out of control. The the, the fact that that Obama hasn't been thrown out of office <laughs> and into a prison cell. Or at the very least into a court and charged with treason against the Constitution, against the Second Amendment, against now, as we've seen here against the rights of citizens, against the, the Medicare, all these things that uh, will be just destroyed. Um, they're talking here about um, the intellectual property chapter of the, the deal linked online more than a year ago. Internet Freedom Advocates criticized the provisions as problematic for tech companies and free speech, while public health experts said it would dramatically restrict the access of life-saving medicines in poor countries, which I covered just before. Um, yeah, I mean, um, I did a uh, podcast on the entertainment industry and how they had written this... <coughs> this... Oh talk about dark it was this this new copyright law that they whole thing that they wanted to do is is to be able to go into people's computers right this is this i can't remember the the exact name of the um of the document right but i looked at the document i read through it and put it up on this podcast i'll try to put a link below um it was the most one of the most belligerent things i've ever seen they actually were saying that what they want to be able to do is to go and put malware, um, spyware, uh, all these root kits. I don't even know what root kits are really, but all these things that would go into your computer, infect your computer, Trojans, right? That they wanted Congress to allow them to do this. So that if by chance you had anything on your computer that uh, somehow you didn't pay for, right? Or you, you didn't have the patent for, <laughs> right? You didn't pay for they could fuck you up. They could screw your computer. They could destroy your computer. They could literally set off a, a sort of chain of events that would just destroy your computer, would freeze it up, um, and then the police would come and arrest you. <laughs> and that was their solution. I mean, you're talking about a thing that was about 140 pages long. And the whole thing was about how we need to attack every single person out there who has a computer and that the government should allow us to do this because we're super powerful corporations and we're putting lots of money in your pockets <sighs> there's no end to it the uh, policy mike here has got another article on it this is from a few days back the trans-pacific partnership is the Obama administration keeping secrets about its new trade agreement. Well, I don't think I need to go into that because it's pretty fucking obvious. Um, here is the green shadow cabinet dissident voice here and how they are really digging into this. Um, for three years now, the Obama administration has engaged in 16 rounds of secret negotiation, 16 rounds to develop the TPP, those negotiations have included hundreds of representatives of global corporations. The TPP negotiations have excluded representatives from the vast majority of American people. It is a fact that the TPP is a global economic policy for the 1% at the expense of the 99%. That's a fact of life now, isn't it? Right? Isn't it? Isn't it? at that point right now where you just feel like there's almost nothing we can seem to do to 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 stop these 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 corporations these horrendous horrendous corporations from destroying our national sovereignty from destroying our planet 
creating wars all over the place, especially in the Middle East, take control of all the oil. Probably kicking off a major war very soon, starting in Syria. These are the same assholes, all right? These the same freaking jerk-offs that attend the Bilderberg meetings and hang out with Kissinger and Brzezinski and the Rothschilds and Rockefellers. So today, all five branches and 81 members of the Green Shadow Cabinet began to act in concert to not only defeat the TPP, but to show America that another government with another global economic agenda is possible. There is an alternative to the corrupt political establishment that produces economic terrors like the TPP. Our cabinets proved the alternative. I haven't looked into this Green Shadow Cabinet, but um, as I said, they're thank God they're doing this, you know. Um, if you oppose the industrial farming practices of Monsanto, <laughs> farming practices, right? That's a polite way of putting it. Cargyle or and other food giants and agribusiness corporations with their intense use of toxic herbicides and other harmful chemicals, uh, production of untested genetically modified food, efforts to control the seed supply and patent life uh, their pollution of the water air soil and food supply then you must oppose the tpp if you, you know monsanto alone anything that monsanto is doing alone just monsanto you should oppose with all your with every fiber in your body uh, you know but let's be honest monsanto is not alone in being an evil psychopathic corporation that uh, wants to depopulate the planet and feed us food that um, has no um, nutrient value and has all the nutrients extracted from it and full of the genetically modified organisms that uh, create uh, sicknesses, autism, all kinds of, of degenerative diseases, um, cancers, uh, huge tumors, da 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 da. I mean, how many times have I talked about it? I'm like a broken record here. But I have to keep reminding people because there might be somebody who just logged on to Free Radio Revolution for the first time and is hearing this. It's so hard to put it into words how important it is for people to stand up to this kind of stuff. If you oppose the actions of the big banks and the financial institutions that led to the world economic crash, Exploding wealth inequality, the greatest wealth inequality in the history of the world, risky investments that endanger the economic future and their ability to dominate national policies, then you must oppose the TPP. If you are committed to protecting the rights of working people to a living wage, the right to organize and to safe working conditions, then you must oppose the TPP. If you favor free and open internet uh, where free speech is protected and creativity and communications flourish, then you must oppose the TPP. If you understand healthcare is a human right and that inflated prices of pharmaceutical drugs should not be protected by law, then you must oppose the TPP. I like this article. If you want to see the air waters and lands protected from toxic chemicals and pollution and know the ecological crisis of species extension and environmental breakdown must be reversed then you must oppose the tpp if you would live in a world where local state and national governments are allowed to take urgent action to deal with global climate crisis and to implement a new a green new deal then you must oppose the tpp well I just said, how can I put it in words? I think they did a great job here. Um, yes, it's all that. It is all that. It is all this and more. This is the big picture. Talk about the big picture all the time here on Free Radio Revolution. And really, this is the big picture. The corporations are trying to destroy national sovereignty and they are trying to keep us all as powerless and powerless serfs basically right on land that we don't own uh, buildings that we don't own the buildings that are owned by our banks that can be seized at any time how out of control has it gotten you know it is unfucking believable 
Um, I talked about Elizabeth Warren uh, before. Let's see if she's got something important to say Senator here. from Massachusetts. I rise today to talk about trade agreements and the impact they have on our economy. Trade agreements affect access to foreign markets and our level of imports and exports. They also affect a wide variety of public policy issues, everything from wages, jobs, the environment, the Internet, to monetary policy, pharmaceuticals, and financial services. Many people are deeply interested in tracking the trajectory of trade negotiations. But if they don't have reasonable access to see the terms of the agreements under negotiation, then they can't have any real input. Without transparency, the benefits of an open marketplace of ideas are reduced enormously. I am deeply concerned about the transparency record of the U.S. trade representative and with one ongoing trade agreement in particular, the Trans-Pacific Partnership. For months, the trade representative who negotiates on our behalf has been unwilling to provide any public access to the composite bracketed text relating to the negotiations. Now, the composite bracketed text includes proposed language from the United States and also from other countries, and it serves as the focal point for negotiations. The trade representative has allowed members of Congress to access the text, and I appreciate that, but there's no substitute for public transparency. I've heard the argument that transparency would undermine the trade representative's policy to complete the trade agreement because public opposition would be significant. In other words, if people knew what was going on, they would stop it. This argument is exactly backwards. If transparency would lead to widespread public opposition to a trade agreement, then that trade agreement should not be the policy of the United States. I believe in transparency and democracy, and I think that the U.S. trade representative should too. So I ask the president's nominee to be the trade representative, Michael Froman, three questions. The first, would he commit to releasing the composite bracketed text? The second, if not, would he commit to releasing a scrubbed version of the bracketed text that made anonymous which country proposed which provision? And I want to note here, even the Bush administration put out a scrubbed version during the negotiations around the free trade area of the Americas Agreement. And third, I asked Mr. Froman if he would provide more transparency behind what information is made available to outside uh, advisors. Currently, there are about 600 outside advisors that have access to sensitive information, and the roster includes a wide diversity of industry representatives, and some from labor and some from NGOs. But there is no transparency around who gets what information or whether they're all getting the same things. And I think that's a real problem. Mr. Froman's response to my three questions was clear. No, no, and no. Mm. He will not commit to making this information public so that the public can track what's going on. So I am voting against Mr. Froman's nomination later today because I believe we need a new direction from the trade representative, a direction that prioritizes transparency and public debate. The American people have the right to know more about our negotiations that will have a dramatic impact on our working men and women, on our environment, on our economy, on the Internet. We should have a serious conversation about our trade policies because these issues matter. But it all starts with the transparency of the U.S. trade representative. Thank you, Madam President. Just the absence of a quorum. The clerk will call the roll. Yeah, great job, uh, Elizabeth Warren, one of the few uh, nominated uh, representatives out there that um, is actually trying to speak out against what's going on. It, uh, 
if we're going to listen to our own governments, they're going to tell us how wonderful this thing is, right? The government of Canada, Trans-Pacific Partnership members in advance negotiations in Vancouver. The Honourable Ed Fast, Minister of Trade, uh, International Trade and Minister of Asia-Pacific Gateway today, marked the conclusion of the Trans-Pacific Partnership is from June the 16th, um, which took place in Vancouver from June 14th to the 16th. As, uh, as governments committed to opening new markets to increase Canadian exports to fast-growing regions around the world, we are proud to be playing an active role in negotiating the ambitious TPP agreement that advances Canadian interests and brings jobs, growth, and prosperity to all TPP countries, said uh, Minister Fast. I am pleased to report that the sessions held in Vancouver have helped move these important negotiations forward. That's what they'll tell you. We we had, um, when we covered the Canadian Council of Chief Executives, we had John Manley telling you how wonderful, how wonderful the Canadian Council of Chief Executives was for Canadians. It's great for Canadians. Great for Canadians. But then, of course, at the end, he was saying, wow, well, you know, the idea of national sovereignty, well, it's, you know, it's kind of outdated. It's, you know, it's good for, good for breaking things up, but really, you know, really, we don't, we don't really want Canada. You know, we're not... You know, we love Canada. This is great for Canadians. It's great for 150 Canadians. <laughs> right? It's great for them. Fucking wonderful for them. It's the best thing in the world for them. And they're the richest people in the country. And they run the country. And they meet with the Prime Minister three or four times a month. Right? And who the fuck else gets to meet with the Prime Minister like that right well the people that pull the strings for the prime minister the people that run the country right and they don't just run the country because these are multinational corporations these corporations want to grow they want their power they want to control the entire fucking world it all comes together when we talk about the illuminati the bilderbergs one World Government, Council on Foreign Relations, Trilateral Commission, the Rand Corporation, da 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 da. There's so many of them, but they're all part of this agenda to destroy national sovereignty, to take over the world, to um, effectively turn people into sheeple, which they already are for the most part, and to take away all their rights, to have an elite group of eugenicists running the entire world, depopulating the world by, well, vaccinations and GMO food, which they won't touch with a 10-foot pole. Right? You think Bill Gates eats uh, GMO food? Although he's the largest stockholder in Monsanto. But he won't touch GMO food. None of them do, because they know what it is. And they know what the fuck's going on. When evilness rises... And take it one step further with this GMO, because it's all connected, right? When Monsanto is one of the major corporations that is behind this whole Trans-Pacific trans Partnership, it is because they know how evil and guilty they are, and that they need these laws to protect them from the outrage that will be rising when people realize what GMO food is doing to their children let alone themselves here um this is how they would be able to compromise the national milk producers federation um the national milk producers federation board of directors last week's approved resolution uh, in opposition to any Trans-Pacific Partnership agreement that does not provide a significant increase to access to Canadian dairy market. As part of the resolution, the N NMPF's board also urged the U.S. Trade Representative's Office and the U.S. Department of Agriculture to negotiate an agreement with Canada that eliminates barriers to trade and provides mutually open dairy markets. Now, why I'm bringing this up is, is, is important. Okay, because one of the things that Canada did stop 
from entering into their markets was the bovine horse gromum that is found in American milk, right? The steroids and whatever they're pumping into to um, the cows to make them bigger and to produce, you know, make their mammary glands or whatever they're, they're, they're make them produce incredible amounts of milk. And um, people put that in their breakfast cereal. And then they have their breakfast cereal with their GMO'd corn sugar and everything else that is in there. Um, they want to have access to the Canadian dairy market. So this National Milk Producers Federation, I obviously American, right? And they are going to use the TPP to try to get it, to try and break into the Canadian market. This is exactly on a small this is a one example of of how these things will are all our things that are protecting our own national sovereignty will be destroyed when we get to the point where you your your government your people can't even have control over the laws protecting their foods because you have signed on you've traded away your right to be able to protect your own people because now you've given the right to to monsanto you've given the right to um all these exxon mobile all these huge nasty criminal um multinational corporations that care nothing in fact let's let's be honest care nothing about national sovereignty they loathe national sovereignty. They loathe people being awake. They loathe people standing up to them. And this is why they are hiding everything about it. They need to hide this from us. Because they know that if we know what the fuck they're doing, we will stop these motherfuckers. Right? We will stop them. And that is their fear. And that is why they must keep it a secret. This is extremely important. It, it really is. It's so important that we understand how they are doing these things. Why are they are doing these things. When they are doing these things. It is vital if we cannot stop these things then we will find ourselves completely powerless in no time at all and we will find ourselves at the mercy of these psychopathic multinational corporations from hell who want to see humanity depopulate itself and they want complete fucking control over everything. There is no end to their quest for control. All right. That's all for now. Um, please try to push this around if you can. Not just this video, but anything, any information. This is important. These things are huge. This is the big picture. It really, these are the big pictures. This is... You know, while we're, we, we go on about Boston bombings and, and Sandy Hook and all that shit, those are relatively small things compared to what this is, what this will do and, and the power that it has. Once these corporations have these kind of deals in place, there'll be nothing to stop them. Nothing. Unless the people rise up, right? And what are the chances of that happening? All right, so leave your comments below and... Have a wonderful day.